Alright guys, welcome back to the most amazing gaming channel in the world. My pizza wasn't done, so I thought I could get another one out. Anyways guys, welcome back to the most amazing gaming channel ever. And so yeah, today we're going to go over the Season 4 Anubis build. Uh, the first thing you want to go into is going to be your 1. Uh, the 1 does more damage than the 2. Now this is about the only time you really level it up till the next few levels. And this is where people are going to get very controversial and they're going to be upset. So I'm going to try and explain myself as I go along. Second uh, one you want to go into is going to be your 3. And then go into the, um, if there is a kill potential, which with Anubis, you do have a shit ton of high damage, um, you may want to go on into the two, but only if you do have the potential to kill by hitting a wrap. Otherwise, just keep farming and go on into your three. Uh, then go into your two. And then go into your ult. Now your ult you're going to want to upgrade whenever possible. Not only does it reduce the cooldown, but it does an extra... It does a lot. It does an extra 5 damage per tick. Now you do 5 damage um, for 0.1 seconds for 3 seconds. So in a sense you're doing 150 damage by upgrading the ult. Very, very strong. Um, so, uh, then you want to start leveling the three. The three is going to be your main lane clear. Now keep in mind, and you have to be smart about this, do not three a camp in which you can kill with your one. Um, now, be smart as well. Don't one a camp, not kill it, and have to throw down your three, because otherwise you're just not going to... You're going to waste a ton of mana by doing that. So it's basically going to come with, that, with uh, playing Anubis and learning when you can clear with your one and when you can clear with your three. Um, also, no, if you're Anubis and you have your jungle doing a camp, throw down your three and run away. Your three will clear it. Get back to lane. You don't have to sit there and auto it until it's dead. Your three is going to clear it up. Um, same thing with lane. Throw down the three, run away. Your three's going to clear lane. It's the most annoying thing when people will sit there and they'll be like, ah, and they'll like auto it, and then I'm like, oh, it's dead. Okay, now I can turn. No! Move! <laughs> Throw down the three and run away. Anyways, enough uh, bitching. Uh, at this point, you want to hold on, or I do go in, no, I do try and hold on to it uh, at level eight. Um, sometimes... It may be beneficial to go into your two here just because it's going to give you an extra point two. But for the most part, just hold on to it. Uh, at level nine, go into your three and your ult. Uh, then I go into my two and I start leveling my two. Uh, like I said, you want to upgrade the ult whenever possible. Um, and I have a lot of people that will disagree and say, no, you don't level the two. The two's like the worst thing to level. No, I personally don't think so. This means not only do you get the extra four second cooldown reduction, uh, by leveling it up. So if you get out of position or if things happen, you keep getting ganked, you have this available at your disposal much more frequently than the extra four seconds, which means it can save your life. In addition to that, yes, it only goes up 0.2 seconds. But if you think about it, you get 1.2 seconds to two seconds. Most of the time, all you have to do is walk up to someone and they're going to be dead. Look how long that rap was. That's going to be at level 11. They're going to be dead. And if they don't have beats, they're out. Or, I mean, they're, they're going back to base. Um, if you don't level this up and you level the 3 or your 1, I personally don't see the reason to level your 1 because your 3 is going to clear lane anyways. So the only time you're ever going to really go in is by trying to get close to someone. I mean, maybe not super close, but you get in. And this is what you're going to try and pull. Like, yes, I understand why you'd, you'd go into that, but I personally think the two's a much better option. It gives you more survivability, and it gives you a higher kill potential. So please, um, I mean, I, I get the reason why, so I'm trying to explain this, so I don't have everyone in chat or in the comments fucking, but you're one so much better. It reduces the cooldown. It does more damage. You don't necessarily need the damage when your three is clearing the lane in itself, and if you go for the kill, just fucking do your three, two, ult, and they're dead anyways! Especially uh, supports. They never have beads. Like, I shred through Athena's, even if they do have re reinforced greaves. Anyways, uh, for the most part, uh, you start off going uh, into Pythag's piece. Um, this gives you a ton of magic protect or magic uh, lifesteal. The power is not great, but it gives, it gives you, for 2300, it gives you tw uh, 70 magic power, gives you 24% lifesteal, um, and it'll help your jungle as well as give you uh, mana and cooldown reduction. Uh, so I do go into Pythax piece first. Then I come back and go into Shoes of the Magi. And then, uh, depending on how gold spooling is, most of the time I'll try and go into Dynasty Plate Helm. This gives you physical protections, which you definitely need as a 
uh, Anubis, you need Magical Pen, and the Magical Power. It's a very cheap item, and it's very, very strong. Then I'll go back in and uh, go into Spear of the Magus. In my video, I was still learning the build, and I didn't do so hot. Spear of the Magus is going to be a very good item. Now that it was recently buffed, think about this. Um, and I'm going to pop this open right now. Um, the... Uh, what is it? Is it? No, oh, it is this one. Okay, the Magic Pen right now is 40. You have 40 Magic Pen. That's not including the stacks that you will get with this, which means it gives you an extra 50 magic uh, pen. That is amazing. Um, so for the fact that you can do that and essentially have 90 uh, magic pen, even uh, with any auras that uh, the enemy team may have, you're probably going to shred through that very quick. And because Anubis is almost everything uh, tick damage, that's 0.5, that's 0.1, this is 0.5, you're going to shred all of that and get all five of them at the very worst, not using your uh, ult or anything like that, but just using one ability, you're going to shred through it in that two, that two seconds. So pretty pretty heavy uh pretty nice especially if you land the you know the ult in 0.5 seconds you've shredded every single one of their protections um anyways to finish on off here uh, depending on how the gold spooling will go i'll go into book of the dead or rod of tahuti rod of tahuti is going to give you a very good uh power spike in addition to that if you need the extra power if you're not quite getting kills and everything like that rod of tahuti may be the better pickup here uh you really do have to see how it goes because there's no like you know starting this and be able to you know alter off and go into bancrofts that's not that's, that's not how you have to do it so you have to sit there and go okay Am I going to get enough gold to get Rada Tahuti? Is my team able to get the kills even if I don't? If that's the case, then go into Book of the Dead. Otherwise, I'm um, going to Rada Tahuti. It's going to be very, very strong to go between these two. Regardless, whatever one you don't pick up, you'll go into the other. Most of the time, I'll probably try and get Rada Tahuti as a fifth item just to be able to get that huge uh, power spike. And then go into Magic or Book of the Dead. Uh, Book of the Dead is incredibly strong. It's literally tailored for Anubis. Uh, you get 100 magic power, 20 lifesteal, and 200 health. Uh, the health that you get, which is going to be super, super strong, gives you... Oh, I can't lifesteal off them. I forgot about that. All right, so we're just going to walk on in and uh, just ult the raw here. Um, and you can see 20% of your health you get back. So you really have over 2,000 health as an incredibly high burst. Mate. I mean, you can almost lifesteal through anything they give because of not only your passive, but you have 65% lifesteal incredibly strong you're literally peaked out at lifesteal and because of that your passive gives you like an extra 60 so it's you you're super super in a sense almost tanky and you can survive a lot by going with this route so anyways guys thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it. if you did like it give it a like comment subscribe my pizza's probably burned and until the next time have yourself a fucking amazing life